If you can't tell from the large selection of cutlery on the table, we're gonna talk about machetes. In Central and South America, the Indo-Pacific, the machete is king. Hey guys, Zach here with Blade HQ. We're at uh, Blade Show 2018. I'm sitting down with Joe Flowers. How's hey it going? Hey man, good, how about you? Yeah, doing great, thanks for being here. Thanks for asking me to come. Yeah, and uh, if you can't tell from uh, the large selection of cutlery on the table, we're gonna talk about machetes. Yep, machetes are my thing. I uh, work for Condor Tool and Knife. I also design for tops, and uh, I take people down to the Amazon jungle to use machetes out in the jungle. So I, I brought a smattering of machetes that are out here today that are a little bit different, some that I've helped design and uh, figured we talk about them real quick. Great, I love it. Now here's a question. So why, why a machete? That's a, that's a great question. And, and you know, we're in North America, right? So everybody's thinking axes. Axes. I'm a freaking frontiersman. I should be able to use an ax. But in Central and South America, the Indo-Pacific, the machete is king. It's one of these things where people are still fighting with blades today. And then that co comes out an example with the machete. And people use machetes for food, for hunting, for shelter, for bushcraft and survival, and of course for agriculture as well. So it's kind of the original farmer's tool, bushcrafting knife. Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd argue that it's probably the most used edge tool today that nobody knows about. Wow. Because well, it's like a blue collar thing, you know? It's, totally. The poor people use it. Places where you can't have tractors, that's where they use it. Yeah. So uh, it's kind of interesting. Perfect. Well, teach us about it so we now we know. Okay. So we're, we know about machetes. We know they're big, long blades. Well, what happens when a sword and a machete have a baby? <laughs> well, the... I'm not going to tell you the, the uh, details, but this is the result. So this is a two-handed machete called the Makara. Um, this is made by Condor Tool and Knife. It's pretty popular because it's like a two-handed, wieldy machete. Um, yeah. You can use it on, on lots of big foliage. You can use it on trees. You can probably use it on zombies. But it's a machete before it's a knife, so it's a little bit thinner. Now, machetes have a distal taper. They go from thick to thin down the line, but this one kind of has like a Japanese look to it. It's called the Makara. Oh, uh, this is really cool. Combat now, machetes, because they still kind of use it for combat sometimes. So is that, so yeah, so what's the idea with, with the two-handed, why would I want a two-handed machete outside of combat? Uh, well, there, it's cool to feel like Conan. Yeah, no, it you know, is. It, it that's is. kind of what you feel like, to be honest. Um, you can get a little bit of extra um, uh, power with chopping two-handed. If you only have enough room for like one hand, you can hold one hand there embrace. and do that cool. and embrace that way. I'm trying to speak as best I can because we've been talking all day at Blade Show oh, yeah. and our voices are gone. <laughs> but this is um, another like one and a half handed one. And there just aren't a lot of two handed machetes out there. You can also do a draw cut where you cut with the machete and then pull back where your pinky ends up on the other side. And that makes like a, a roundy, physics-y, science-y thing that cuts a little bit better in some cases. Okay, awesome. This is a Discord machete, by the way. Made um, by Condor. And what would the sheath look like for something like this? Uh, it's, um, Usually leather? Does it come with a sheath? Tons of leather. It's like yeah. a whole couch worth of leather. Right, I Yeah, imagine. both of these have uh, a lot of leather. There are some Kydex machete sheaths out there, yeah. but they're expensive, man. You're talking like 60 bucks for a machete sheath. Right. Um, so it gets expensive. Okay. So we're talking about hybrids, a parang and a kukri. This is called the, um, this is called the amalgam. It's a mix between a parang and a kukri. And you know, one thing that people don't know about machetes when they use them, here's a machete tip, is that you use a pinch grip. Instead of holding it in a death hold, you use it in your thumb and your forefinger, and you're able to use it for a longer amount of time. Now that works for kukris too. So you lock, so you put your, fourth, your, your pointer finger, thumb over, yep. and then you, oh, okay. Yeah, and you're able to do it. And this is about the longest length I would actually use a lanyard on, because when you're having any machete, no matter what manufacturer, yeah. and it falls out of your hand, you're having it spin around your nether regions. You have to be careful with that. Gotta be careful with that. This is another micarta, more tactical machete called the Warlock, made by Condor, um, also designed by me. This interesting item is, a, is the uh, Condor Big Leaf uh, machete designed by Matt Graham from Tool Survival. You see it has a leaf shape on it, it's kind of barong, and because it has more weight on the back, it's able to chop a little bit better, so it's a neat pokey uh, little machete. Now with one like this that's got a little more heft, would you still go with the pinch grip? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you, awesome. You'd want to use a pinch grip almost on everything. Okay. Um, I would even been explained it's like using a hammer. You know, you don't want to use it all day long holding a death grip. You want no. to have, have a light hit so that all the energy is not transmitting into your arms. See, my only experience with machetes is this side of the table. Just a cheap machete. My grandma, yeah. 
she had a f like a, literally an acre of weeds. Yeah, And yeah. my dad said, go out and do it, boy. And so I went out there with a stupid dull machete and started chopping at it, but I, I did, I death, I death gripped it and it made me hate machetes. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and it can. I mean, it can make you hate axes, it can make you hate, uh, yeah. it can make you hate uh, shoveling snow in your yard if you're not careful. I, I like that pinch grip, though. I like yeah, that. Yeah, it, it works really well. Now, why do you think your uh, uh, machete was dull? Could have oh. probably been a problem with the edge or something. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so like some of the cheaper machetes come with what my uh, friend Benjamin Bouchard calls a courtesy edge. This is, so you can see this one's not really like ground out sharp, is it? Yeah, it's not. I noticed that when we were looking at them earlier. Uh, a lot of the user machetes don't have a, a ground down edge because it's uh, the maker or the person at the end who sharpens it with the file and makes either a very, very thin edge or a very, very thick edge depending on what they uh, cut. So. A lot of times you're using a file and you start from the spine to the back to sharpen the machete too. Hmm. And we have a lot of examples of machetes with different types of edges. This one has more of a convex edge. Yeah. Um, this is the Topps um, uh, .230 machete and I believe you guys have that yeah. on, your, on your site. I believe we do. Um, and this is easily sharpened with the file too. This is 1095, whereas all of these are 1075 high carbon steel. Hmm. Um, and this is an American made machete but it also can be sharpened with an edge. We use this machete down on our Bushcraft Global Amazon trips. Okay. Uh, there's a dude named Alberto, and he fishes with this machete. He kills Cayman with this machete. He picks off his nails with this machete. <laughs> you know what he does when he doesn't have bait? He brings up his foot and shaves the callus off of his foot and uses that on the hook to fish with. And he actually gets something with it. Oh gosh, yeah, well he does, <laughs> he's amazing. We call him Beast Mode Bushcraft. That's amazing. Um, he fishes with the machete. <laughs> If this is a fish, internet, if this is a fish and I'm going after it, I'd use a light cut so that I don't have to pick up two pieces of the fish. <laughs> right. uh, because that's annoying. And you aim forward, so if it goes forward, it goes into the blade. Right. And you use a flashlight to get the eye shines and you hold huh. it by your head. That's really, really interesting. So we covered like pinch grip and some tips like that. What yeah. are some other questions about machetes? Well, I, some of the machetes I think I want to see what's going on with this thing. Oh. What, what is this thing? Oh, so this is like a, a Filipino machete. My friend Ruben brought this back from the Philippines for me. The Philippines have a big machete and blade culture. You can see that it has a hollow handle there, and it's one, one shape. And check out the handle. What do you think that material is? I mean, it looks like a, like a bamboo or a, it's a, a, vine. a vine or a yeah, reed. Yeah. yeah, this is a, uh, a vine. So um, it's, it's a reed that's like impermeable to, to water and they have a little bit of glue underneath. But what's interesting about this is like, this isn't Kydex, but it's pretty darn cool. Because when you put it in the sheath, and you click forward this way, it holds. So it can, <laughs> it can hold real well. And then you pull it back and you're able to pull it out. You and mind if I see the inside of that? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I dabble with wood from time to time. I like that a lot. It's kind of like scab scalloped into a, huh. a very, very tight ramp. And you can make those at home. You can even make, um, yeah. Uh, machete sheath with PVC pipe at 230 uh, uh, degrees Celsius. Interesting. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of interesting um, uh, things from different areas of the world, not just Latin America. But this is probably the most interesting one. What does that look like to you? <laughs> it just looks like a like a big leaf or a, like a like a whale coming out of the ocean <laughs> or something like that. It's not, it's not an orca uh, machete. <laughs> Although before, sometimes I've seen this like uh, advertised as a snow knife. It's actually a knife used in Costa Rica. And what happens is the blade has a bend at a few degrees like so, and then you're able to cut it a certain way close to the ground to cut the grass. They call it a, a machete del suelo, or a grass machete. But they made it flat for tourists so that they're able to etch uh, um, okay. for this particular model that, right here. Yeah, yeah, okay. So they can put all sorts of really cool designs. But it also is used for grass. So, this, so, so you would etch this, buy it as a tourist, but this particular one, could you still work with it? Is this oh yeah, yeah, cool? I have. Okay. Um, it's chisel ground too, guys. So it's sharpened on one side. Yeah. I've, I've used it to try, try and use it, but it's a little bit wonky. You can, yeah. you can try and swing it and see. It's, oh, it's, yeah. it's very, very interesting. It is an interesting swing, that's for sure. Um, and so this guy is used for meat. It's a kitchen knife oh, okay. uh, used by butchers in Latin America and in, in South America. El Salvador is where, where Condor comes from. And uh, they're primarily a machete company. So you can see this says Imacasa on it. Imacasa is uh, the parent company of Condor Tool and Knife. Condor Tool and Knife is kind of their step up. Right. So that's a, a quick overview of some of the machetes on the table. Awesome. 
There's some really cool uh, functions with the machete that can help you too. These are notches that were carved with the machete. So if you can imagine breaking this off, this is like a tent peg. Yeah. This way, this can be a tent peg. This is a tree um, where there's a branch growing one way and a branch growing the other. This can also be used as a hook. So when you're using your machete, you hook like right. briars. You want to keep away from briars because it hurts. Yeah, right? you don't want to go through that. Yeah, so you'd hook it. Go ahead and hold it. Yeah. You'd hook that or put it in your left hand. Left hand. Yeah. Okay. And so you'd hook the, the material yeah. and then pull it back and get it to arc and then you cut it. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah, you can cut it that way okay. or you can pull it back this way and pull it back and cut and throw it over your shoulder. They use it to mow grass. That's they use amazing. it to uh, uh, cut all sorts of different pieces of agriculture. That's amazing. So, these are why I like machetes a lot. You know, I see people do so many different amazing things with them. Yeah. And uh, it makes it's, me have a passion for it. It's them. a really versatile tool. To be honest, it's kind of off my radar how versatile they really are. Yeah, if you see somebody, if, come down to South America and, oh, and see them great. change a car tire with a machete, <laughs> uh, pick their nails with the machete, do all sorts of different things, and you really have a respect for how multifaceted this amazing tool is. Awesome. All right, so two things. One, it sounds like we need to go to South America together. Sounds good. Have an adventure. I'm into that. Two. Uh, machete, what, what, which one? Which one should I get? Oh What's man! On the table, which one should I get? I love all. I love any machete, even if I, I mean, didn't help design right? This it. is your personal collection, correct? Yeah, but this is like one out of two hundred I have in my car, <laughs> and probably well over four hundred that I have at my house. That's amazing. Um, I'm writing a book at some point, but we'll you get should. to that. You definitely I should. really like this guy. It's called the Amalgam. Oh, this is yeah. This is the Amalgam. Yeah. Okay. I like it this much. That it's. There's my beater amalgam. Awesome. <laughs> it's all wrecked up, but you can do fine carving with it. It chops really, really well, and it's kind of lightweight. Cool. Well, amalgam. I'll have to take a look. Amalgam. Yeah, I like the stuff Wonderful. you get in your teeth. Yeah, exactly. It's a awesome. mixture. Well, thanks for being here. Hey, you can find out more about us at uh, bushcraftglobal.com, Condor TK on Instagram, Facebook, and just Google machetes, and you'll find somewhere I'll probably- you pop up somewhere. Probably. I don't want to sound, sound too, too crazy, but I really like machetes. I love it. Awesome. Hey guys, well thanks for watching. Make sure to check out our other videos from uh, Blade Show on our 2018 Blade Show playlist that we got here on YouTube. And uh, we'll see you next time.